I'd really appreciate it. You know, you don't even have to use much. You could use any metal as well, chrome, anything that, that creates a black and white scale. But of course, uh, a gold camera on like a gold CFast card from a gold sensor, which there's plenty of, uh, recording a uh, movie and then the charge is taken, you know, and uh, projected onto a silver screen, but like in supposedly, you know, monochromatic, but it was like filmed that way from gold. That would be the best way to get an amazing um like backed into light bounce back frequency because silver is just the reverse of gold. I mean, or you could do it the traditional silver way and then bounce it so it's doubled like two negative charges making a hyper gold positive charge. I just want to watch movies this way and they're way more 3D without much effort simply because it's the film-like effect but off of the screen as well. That's why people used to do this. They were doubling up the energy. They knew it didn't work well enough so they were coming up with supplemental reasons why it should work better. Also, fuck you, pay me just for bringing it up again. I'm probably inventing all this shit. Um, there's no reason to be having any old film that was filmed in silver or any one of those metals in black and white when you can simply just watch it like project it off of a screen and it'll bounce back in color straight to your fucking eyeballs without glasses. It's called chromatic aberrance like we talk about a lot. It's gray to gray technology, and silver looks kind of grayish white. So does alum, so does uh, even under the right conditions, chrome. So what am I saying here? Uh, in order to supplement it, because polymer, when it's polished up, is pretty shiny, you could just spray it into a polymer screen so you don't have to even spend much on metals. Come on. Fuck you. Pay me. My brother brought up that in the modern era... Um, you don't have to, because there's better emulsion, you know, materials from plant-based sources and stuff like orange acid even and, and other things. You could probably use other fruit acids, cranberry, cherry, strawberry. I don't even know. You know what I mean? It's probably endless. The point is because it's just in an emulsion gel and the emulsion gel now doesn't have to be, um, what's that called? Um, uh, like. Well, you can use albizia. Well, yeah, yeah, you can use Albizia even if you want, but the emulsion gel is, uh, you know, used to be like, um, what do you call that? And it would, it would dry out eventually, but now there's polymers, you know, various types you can mix for countertops of any squishiness and anything. Yeah, it goes into the film material. Yeah. Also, Lancho Carpus Kyanescence, it, um... Has amazing color splitting ability for film or anything. Yeah, so what I was trying to get across here is just that because of the, this type of advancement, you don't actually need those panels between modern film, especially gold because it's so magnetic. Like silver screen, it's, you know, a little harder to work with than gold because it's so magnetic. I don't understand why people aren't understanding the principles here that with gold, why do you need to be taking an image? Have they ever considered that modern film in the modern era would literally just be, um, the hills and valleys of the magnetic data. Yeah. The hills and the valleys of the magnetic data. The, the, it's the, you have it react to light, but it's not visible until you digitize it. And then, hey, look, film's back on the menu, boys. All those aspects you like of the moving picture, except it's just moving metal. Well, yeah, you know how magnetic tape, like audio tapes, video tapes, they have a magnetic head reader? Well, you just have that right on the camera, your film camera. This came out in 2012, supposedly. And then as the long strip of... We're just inventing it right Data, now. Fuck you, pay me. Yeah, on the um, on the film strip with all the different layers emulsed in the uh, polymer are all mixed, so then they can activate upon light hitting them intensely from the lens coming yeah. in. Then you don't need individual frames because that's just for interlacing. All that data, as it hits anywhere along the strip, as it rushes past, is just splattered in there and then it's instantly read by the magnetic head that yeah the same technology the i was talking about for scanning old film yeah you have a laser that's penetrating at a certain depth like a little barcode scanner except it is just 
reading the data. You have a magnetic wheel that's uh, reading the surface data, you know, telemetry and, you know, what the crystals look like and uh, pulling electromagnetism out through them because it's actively flowing so it can look even better. And it all just looks fantastic. I don't know. I think that this film right now that we're describing, because it's like metal, basically, there, there's not even any dye, why it's so good is because you don't have to even um, replace the film. You could potentially run it in a mode where, you know, it's just like running through, like it's a magnetic tape you can record back over, but it's gold, so it's thick and you can just use it forever. And you just are digitizing it right out through cords, you know, into whatever, or card or whatever the fuck somewhere, you know, whatever your method you want to store it in or on the camera or off of it. And that's like all the data right there. And yet it looks like film and all that crap, you know, to people's eyes, but like perfectly yeah. treated film and good, you know, always good lighting with yeah, no grain. It's just in raw format, you know? Yeah, it's just raw as all shit. It's just huge, but. I mean, uh, you, I guess you get what you you build for. Fuck hey, you, pay me. Crystal RAM, you know. Yeah. You handle all that data being crunched into a file. Exactly. Um, I think that that's super sexy beyond belief. I mean, you could do this with silver; it would just be grainier, because silver is just grainier even in data form. So you'd see some noise, like a high quality digital camera in some environments, but. Uh, I mean, if you clean, like I always repeat this, if you have like the silver emulsed in a little bit of gel on either side, that's like from orange acid with like maybe some lithium in it, then it could probably match up to the gold, but its colors would start to look a little fake and, and bright in the blue sections and stuff and you'd have to recolor grade. Uh, you could do the same thing though. It just requires a little more prep to it, and it's a little more complex. You have to manufacture some film, actually, but, in a certain I mean, way. If you're manufacturing all these different types of gems in different ways now in, in factories, then why can't you just take different sizes that you experiment with and, and you know, put them into the crystal, you know, gel layer of the new film, all different types you can manufacture, and those will, you know, catch the light. You know yeah, I mean, you can do that too to bolster the colors, but yeah. the more you do that, the less you get away from the raw data stream right. directly. Yeah. And so the data gets a little more grainy and you need resolving software that like, you know, takes each pixel and matches it up to the data that it's received magnetically and, and pixel pipelines it. But that's all, what I'm saying, that's all pointless because you're thinking of that in interlaced film, whereas if it's a single strip, then there's data all along the strip getting magnetically ripped. Yeah, it all just goes yeah. together automatically, so you don't have to remaster or anything. Good point. Uh, yeah, you should probably do that to the gold film too because uh, gold uh, does react better and the sun has both orange and gold in it. And that's really what plants need to grow as well as some pinkish tones being filtered through the atmosphere from red. So if you want to make a grow light as well, uh, that's what you would need to use to get like sunlight like colors and I'll also have it irradiate out like it's the sun with little little like like yeah. basically machine points like this There's yeah an example oh it's almost like we have it before we came up with it because i kept talking about it check it out here's our uh sun lamp that you know makes our plants grow nice yeah it has little dremel different angles in there uh, yeah to, to irradiate there. like the sun sort of in a yeah. hot day Look how pink it makes our plants. See, it's got pink light in there, gas or whatever, and it'll yeah. get our plants supercharged. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, that's that's all you do. So the emulsion layer is different. It's not really meant to be read in a different way. It's 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 new film. Just a one more piece of advice: if you have like a camera with some sort of uh, dual, like you know, film system with two lenses right next to each other, same as any dual sensor system where you actually have two separate cameras for like heads for uh, 3D, then you kind of want to choose like if you're going to be filming in this color thing for glasses, two different colors for the different you know separate film reels. So you have like, for example, in the emulsion gel with some orange acid in it, like, uh, one's like cranberry and the other one's blueberry juice or something in there from the dyes of it. Or like, 
you know, a gemstone, like, you know, the different colors that work together, like a uh, emerald or like green, and then like, you know, a ruby, because uh, that's like sort of, but you need like a pinker gemstone, so one of the pinker ones. And then, you know, I mean, you can do this all with diamonds just by twisting light through them. So manufactured diamonds went out against every other gemstone because it's just carbon. Everybody has got carbon. You can easily get carbon and you can just do whatever you want with it. And it also, that makes the light twist better because it's like diamonds that are cut, you know, whatever, you know, manufactured into, grown into tiny little pieces that are scattered throughout it. They're all one color. You know... With this new type of film comes the great ability for a new technology that I think is going to be really amazing. And it uh, brings back manual editing a little bit. You have like a magnetic wand that's the opposite charge, like silver for gold or gold for silver. Depending upon the effect you want, you could have gold too. And like, you know, like for example, uh, gold on gold. I don't, I don't know the reactions directly, but I assume gold on gold creates like heavy rainbowing, like of color striations. And you you take this and like... Uh, it's like represented by what it's doing with a tiny little version of it that like comes from above and presses in the same area generally with like a ball end, you know, that, you know, it does on the film, but like in microscopic, so you have this big image on the board and you take your, your magnetic stylus or whatever that, that like, you know, it, it will copy and do what you do with. And you like say you want to like rub in rainbowing off the back of somebody through multiple frames. You like r run the frames and like start, you know, individually like going like tapping through one by one with one hand and you rub behind the person and the, the charge on it like makes magnetic rainbowing on the back of people while they like punch and stuff and around them and all that type of crap and like reacts to the different, you know, depths of field and everything. Uh, with silver, I'm not sure what that would do. Um, probably just more rainbowing again because <laughs> that's all it would do. But you could experiment around and use different charges, like, you know, select different modes that you use. And when you're, you know, using your stylus on, like, the, the table that's touch sensitive, then the, the uh, like, you know, magnetic little tip that's touching the film, you know, that's it's projected up from, uh, you know, the, the image of that's coming from it, you can, like... Um, like with different frequencies, different things happen with metal, like, you know, so you could create different color hue effects when you touch things. And then like it fills out the magnetism automatically because they're a shape within a crystalline form and have magnetic data within. That's why gold's so much better than silver because they have like individual magnetic data. But with this method of ripping, you could do it with either. And then you could, like I said, even rescan it, do all the same methods, but modern onto another piece of film after doing it with no loss because you just scan it with lasers and, and the sound waves again and the magnetic tape like rollers and you've lost nothing and you can keep losslessly working on it and adding things as you want and come back to it when you need. And so like gold at low frequencies, like, you know, how Kodak film is, it's more purple priority. So you'd be making things purple at a higher frequency. It's blue at the incredibly lowest frequency, it's red, but they never use that for film because it's so low exposure usually. Like, it it has a wide range of colors, and when it gets brighter, it turns, you know, of course, gold. So, like, that's pretty cool, you know what I mean? Um, and it has, a, like, a weird lighter UV purple that comes out at higher bluish frequencies. Silver, it has dark, rich blues at medium to lower tones. At incredibly low, it will produce a purple as well. Yeah, I don't think it really goes red. You kind of have to have the inverse signal frequency for that. So, like, that would make things change when to you get red nice from greens blue. from the yeah. red and, um, and uh, I guess, yellow from silver. Yeah. The red and white, you know, you can split it and, uh, yeah. Get some nice greens. Yeah, you can pull frequencies too, like he's saying. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Different directions. And uh, get what you want out of them by changing uh, high and low frequencies within the magnetic and then hence electric well, data. Yeah, like two different, different, nice. two different um, signals separate that are doing different frequencies. And then you mix them together at a point 
then they mix and create the the new color frequency that can't that can do new things that you didn't think possible. Yeah, and it's all physical, and it's it's you know like how you same technology for microscopic robot arms to do surgery. You just have that with little magnetic charges going through them to touch up the film while you do it on a touchscreen above. Well, I mean, yeah, you can modulate the frequencies of uh, the light coming through the lenses live to hit the the film um as an artist and you can compare with like no millisecond delay you know um the the frequencies like how you're adjusting the uh color parameters the rainbowing whatever effect you're doing live so then when the people are doing their acting they could glance at the screen and see that when they gesture you know the effects are really happening as the artist is dialing it in you know, himself with his touch screen, you know, doing it. Um, as well as the fact that even that's just precursory. Then you could you could break for the scenes you're trying to film. The artist can come in, they can touch it up on their um their little touch screens with their little pens and add in all of the data of the realistic whatever monsters or, you know, effects. And then it can all be like laser etched into the film yeah. before it's then scanned in all the different ways. Or whatever choice you want. See, that's why I have all these options because the magnetic roller can magnetically put in the data, but it could be wiped, you know, a different yeah. way. So then it's all... I mean, that's true. You can so then you have a, the, the final ways. decision yeah. is the laser, you know, that's yeah. like big business right there if like you actually are laser etching it then. Yeah, that is kind of permanent. Yeah, that's like the final master copy yeah. right there. Yeah. Some intense shit. I'm just trying to say that if we did this, then for live events, this is really where it would work. Like he yeah, was saying, yeah. you could have that film running and then have people like touching it as it's supposedly live happening. And the laser light is to putting color to the effects even more. Yeah. And you can like make gold rainbowing off of somebody's hand when they move it because you're changing the charge of the film, you know, live yeah. while it's happening with a delay a little bit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, then it can be projected behind them as they're singing or whatever, you know, all the yeah. different types of performance art. You could, you could do it with plays and enhance plays with lasers on people's bodies or projecting things in midair or the scenery behind them, you know. You can make a movie out of a play. Yeah. Completely. It can be like a movie to people. All right. New magnetic screen concept based on the magnetic film concept we came up with. You just have a, uh, like, literally moving strip that just is, you know, all the way up, like, an, like you know, like, just infinitely, like, it goes over tiny rollers on the top and bottom. They're just little poles. And it just moves, you know, as it's film. And then it displays data that's magnetically charged into it from ionic charge Whoa. that, it re you know, it's, it's receiving... That's silly. That's so primitive. That's <laughs> for like ancient stage play. And then it, and then it, like what I was saying is, th this yeah. is the part you're forgetting. And then it translates that data into the ma like magnetized layer that is the screen that plays the the data. So it's like pulling more color and light by pulling the ions through after receiving them on that 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 loop. Couldn't you just? Have lasers moving at a certain speed to simulate movement for the light and then they whoosh over it and then the, they can just be a single panel screen of immersion gel and then the lasers are just going past at whatever speed and generating new images. Oh yeah, you're right. That's right out simpler. at you, glowing. Yeah, it's just it's just wiping the screen, you know, free yeah. of magnetism with lasers hyper fast and reapplying more uh, data ions. Yeah. Yeah, that, that does all of it. Uh, yeah, that's really simple. I guess we invented new film and new film screens. Fuck you, pay me. I deserve my own private island full of uh, se sexy Africans. The sexy ones, not the ugly ones. The sexy ones. You mean the ones whose, <laughs> whose titties look like this? Oh, my God. <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, you know, one of the things you could put in uh, the, the gel in front of gold or silver film is just um, like... Of course, you could make like pepper cyanide colors like he was already saying and stuff for red and blue. But you could also, and this is more interesting, um, use, what was I going to say again? Um, 
Uh, oh, yeah. Peyote. Peyote flower red. Yeah. And uh, the peyote actual itself, green of the actual peyote. And then you got red and green. Yeah, it's just some good colors that are, you know, crystalline. Yeah, and then you then you see weird shit when you bounce it back off of a uh, silver or gold screen when it's the, the right chromatic uh, aberrance, whatever. With all of these things that we've come up with, even these films, the brightness is so much brighter on average light pickup and overall in the bright of the image, if it's bright, that... It's better for like amber blue 3D glasses. We're trying to make everything as bright as possible, as bright, 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 bright as possible. That's why our QLED screen, it's like 120%, 135% above brightness. But they have ones that are like 175 and that's that's too much gas brightness. I don't know. You'd have to wear like 3D glasses for that to be worth it. <laughs> 